discussing about uh, the suggested modification for public review. So these are suggested modification. It or these are not approved modifications, but these are suggested modification for public review. It has been available in the public forum so that everyone can review this and can give uh, any comments or updates from the public to the ICH. And these updates are from E6 R2 to R3. So now the current version which is approved is R2 and the newer version which will come is R3. So which is the latest version which we are going to discuss today that what are the list of changes we might expect and what are the above things we might get into R3 from R2 and why is this R3 is in picture also we will be discussing about this aspect in going forward topics. So now what are clinical trials, uh, why they are important? Clinical trials are fundamental part of uh, the clinical research, which are being designed and conducted uh, to make sure the results are being yielding or being coming out or outcome is coming to establish the safety and well-being of the participants and as well as efficacy of human being. So we conduct clinical trials to understand the evidence. Uh, we conduct clinical trials to understand the outcome. We conduct and we design and uh, perform the clinical trials to know the safety and well-being of the human participants and to give the evidence of the new drugs. So this is about your why clinical trials are being conducted. Now coming back to my next slide, uh, what's in new E6R3 structure and content? So now what are the changes uh, we are going to get in E6R3 structure and content? So now why we have modified it is the new structure is to provide more clarity so it gives more clarity earlier it was having less clarity from e6r2 and we are having now e6r3 with more clarity and better readability so for reading and for understanding e6r3 so it's a better from e6r3 versions provide additional clarity on the scope so some of the scope was not been involved in e6r2 but now we are putting some more scope uh, in your uh, latest e6r3 and uh, uh, facilitate uh, innovative clinical trial designs. After COVID, we have got so many new clinical trials designs like decentralized adaptive or quality by design or basket or umbrella designs. We wanted to uh, facilitate those clinical trial latest designs in the E6R3. That's why we have started using this uh, newer design or newer E6R3 regulations. And now to also facilitate, or facilitate your digital health technologies. Say, for example, you are using variables or you are using technology advancement or anything which you are using for EHRs and EMRs uh, to make sure that enrollment and retention of the subjects are being done and capturing of data like EDC or remote monitoring or analysis of data like data visualization, something like that. We are using it. And that's where the new E6R3 version has been developed in order to uh, facilitate or facilitate all this, your uh, technology advancement and also latest designs of clinical trials. And set a foundation uh, for practical feasible expectation. So the expectation should be really feasible and uh, reality for all the responsible individuals in clinical trials, example, a sponsor, investigator, or in particularly digital ecosystem, how digital ecosystem can be uh, run. So we wanted to do that. That's why E6R3 came into picture and encourage a fit for purpose approach. So which is fit for that particular purpose, like risk-based approaches. Uh, we can't review all the clinical trial data only the particular risk-based assessments approaches are being used and incorporating learning from innovative clinical trial designs and lessons from public health emergencies and pandemics which we have got from COVID. We have got so many lessons how digital clinical trials or decentralized clinical trials can be done and encourage transparencies in clinical trial registrations and results reporting. So clinical trial uh, registrations by using trial registers either it is clinicaltrial.gov or uh, you are CTRI in India, how we can register the clinical trials within the world or within the India and how we can publish the results which are provided into clinical trial for the public notice. So every public, every individual should know that what are the clinical trials we are conducting and what are the possible results we are getting and what is the outcome. And enhancing the ICF process with additional languages, local languages and also 
using the electronic informed consent, how best we can use the electronic informed consent form in particular to use of technology and decentralized clinical trial. We have gone through E6R3. Now, the most important focus uh, is earlier ICH E6R2 was having eight sections. Eight sections, which was including in glossaries and uh, principles of GCP, IRB, IEC composition and responsibilities and investigator and investigator responsibility, sponsor and sponsor responsibility, protocol and its amendment, investigator browser, essential document. But now the ICH E6R3 has been totally changed its structure and we have put as annexures, annexure annexure one and principles of GCP and annexure two. So which I'll be focusing in the uh, next uh, slide. So now this is the uh, brief snapshot of the content of ICH E6R3. Earlier, we used to have eight sections, which I have already said that from glossaries to principles to IRBs to investigator and sponsor and protocol and number IB and essential document. Now, what they have did is they have converted this all things into first section, which is introduction. And the second section is principle. And what they have particularly made is they have made it as an extra one in which an extra one in which they have included all the uh, IRBs, investigators and sponsor and they have revamped completely brought one new topic which is called as data governance particularly investigator and sponsor. So annexure one they have added all the three topics and one new topic they have included which is data governance including they have put a glossaries and appendix they have put and here they have two details of appendix a and appendix b appendix a is your ib appendix b is your clinical trial protocol and amendments and appendix c is essential document so now in a nutshell if you see earlier it was eight sections starting from glossaries to essential documents now this is being converted into first section which is introduction of gcp second section which is principle of gcp third section annexure one in annexure one, there are four subtopics. One is IRB, IEC, one is investigator, one is sponsor, one is data governance, per, particularly for investigator and sponsor. And they have added a glossaries. And in this glossaries also, they have added new terms and they have modified some existing terms also. And in appendix, they have made three A, B, C. Appendix A is IB, which was earlier seventh section. Appendix B is clinical trial protocol, which was earlier section six. Appendix C, which was essential document, which was section eight in the previous GCP. So now this is what we have done as uh, three sections, one for introduction, two for principles, and three for annexures, glossaries, and appendix A, B, C. So which is one? Uh, your ICH E6 R3. And clear scope, professionality, and focus on quality. So we have put what is the clear scope of GCP and also the risk-based monitorings and also focus on quality management systems. So this guidelines applies to interventional clinical trial protocol or products also, which are not intended to support the market authorization applications. This guidelines build on key concept, which are outlined in ICH E8, which is general considerations for clinical studies. So now this ICH E6 R3 is hand in hand working with ICH E8 R1 also, which is general consideration for clinical studies also. And focusing on activities which are critical. So to meet your trial objectives, either it is complexity or cost or quality with an objective involved in each trial. So this is what is clear scope we have given and also risk and focus on quality. And we have invested so much of uh, time here for innovation, efficiency and engagement. So encouraging and exploration of technology. So innovation was more needed for us. That's why we bought so much of new approaches for trial designs, including variables and sensor technology use of this uh, in clinical drugs. <clears throat> Incorporation of such technologies in existing healthcare infrastructure. How can we implement this 
uh, existing technologies or incorporation of these technologies for conducting of clinical trial for making variety of relevant data sources in clinical trial. Either it is coming from wearables or e-consent or e-source or CRF data or lab data or source data, or it is coming from IVRS or IWRS or bot systems, whatever data it is coming, how we are going to integrate with respect to technology. We have made E6R3 very clearly. Use of technology uh, to conduct clinical trial to fit the participant characteristics and trial design, how trial design can be made easy in terms of using technology. Encouraging engagement and inclusivity, the use of innovative clinical trial designs and technology may include diverse patient population. We want a different diverse patient population and by use of technology, we can conduct many kinds of clinical trials, how this ICH E6 R3 can give more guidance on it. The designs of clinical trial to ensure the quality and meaningful trial outcomes. The outcome of trials can be meaningful and can give a nice data for analysis or analytical purpose. So this is one more thing. Quality by design. So quality by design clinical trials can be used as per your ICH E6 R3. And how can you uh, mitigate the risk how can you implement the risk mitigation plans and how can you put the risk-based monitorings in clinical trial? Your ICH E6 R3 has given more focus on this terminology and term. So now substantial changes, as I have already said these words, substantial changes are in principles of GCP. So earlier it was 13 principles which we had. Now principles are being updated. Principles, some principles they have clubbed into one. Some principles they have added newly. So 13 principles were there, but now principles are going to reduce or decrease by 12. And some of the principles have been clubbed. Some of the principles have been added newly. And annexure is a major revamp uh, for investigator and sponsor. And, uh, data governance is very newly added. Data governance is very newly added where uh, we are giving more importance for data security, computer system validation, user access, user management. So all those stuff is being added in your data governance, which is in ICH E6R3. Glossary, some new terms are being added and some existing terms have been modified with respect to definitions and appendix c essential records uh, for the conduct of clinical trials there are some couple of documents which have been added during the conduct of clinical trial which was earlier section 8 of the essential document in your gcp now it is uh, appendix c uh, wherein we can add this in essential records of conduct of clinical trials other changes Annex 1, IRB, IEC, and annex, Appendix A and B, which is Investigator Voucher and Clinical Trial Protocol and its amendments. So this is most important uh, part that what are the changes uh, which has been happened uh, with respect to your ICH E6 uh, principles, ICH E6 R3 principles, how it has been modified. So as I have said all earlier that there are 13 principles earlier. Uh, but now they have made it to 11 principles, 11 principles they have made and now the ethical principle, for example, ethical principle, which was being covered in 2.1, 2.2, 2.3 and 2.7 and 2.11 in E6R2 was being modified or as only one principle, that is principle number one. Say, for example, 2.1 principle used to say uh, the clinical trial should be conducted in accordance with ethical principle of declaration of health in key and also GCP and applicable regulation. So principle number two used to say that risks uh, always should be less than benefit to conduct or to initiate. To principle number 2.3 used to say that right safety and well-being of trial subjects are important consideration. So all this kind of principles they have added and they have put into one principle in E6R3. So which is the first principle? So now all these older principles, 2.1, section 2 is principles of GCP, they have modified into only one principle. Now, earlier informed consent was being captured in 2.9. So, wherein it is being clearly stated that every subject has to voluntarily or willingly sign the informed consent before he participates into clinical trial. Now, this principle was earlier in 2.9. Now, it has become as a second principle. Now, this one, IRB IEC review. So, a Clinical trial has to be conducted as per a protocol which is being priorly reviewed and approved by uh, IRB IEC. Now, earlier it was 2.6. Now it is, they have made it as 3. 
So now the science also has been came into picture. The scientific protocol has to be implemented and clinical and non-clinical information, which is 2.4 and 2.5. These two principles together, they've added and they have put into fourth principle and qualified individual has to be there to conduct the clinical trial, which was earlier 2.8 principle. Now they have made it to fifth principle. The quality management system, which is last principle in A6R2, they have made it to fifth principle. And one more thing, the risk proportionality, which was not there. Earlier, this word was not there, which we say it as not applicable. So this principle was not there earlier in E6R2. They've added newly, which is risk proportionality, which is going to be added as a new principle. And 2.5, which is a clinical trial should be conducted scientifically sound and described in clear detailed protocol, is going to be changed as eighth principle and reliable results. So now this was one more time was being given in 2.10 that the uh, trial results should be accurate and verifiable. All those stuff which was being given in 2.10. Now they made it to ninth principle and roles and responsibility was not there earlier. Roles and responsibility principle was not there earlier, uh, which is not applicable and they have added newly. An investigational product, which was earlier 12th principle, which was manufactured as per GMP and has to be used as per GCP. Now, this principle was in 12th uh, principle. Now, they have made it to 11th principle. You know, on an average, all 13 principles are being modified as 11 principle and two new principles were being added and one principle was risk uh, proportionality and one more principle was roles and responsibility, which was not there earlier in E6R2, which is going to be added into E6R3. Now, going forward, E6R3 might have only 11 principles instead of 13 principles. And this also, section 2, it will come. And these are the principal numbers which we will get in your ICH E6R3. So this is about your uh, principles update. So these are the new principles which are being added. One is risk proportionality and roles and responsibility. Ethical principle, we are modifying it. Informed consent, we are modifying it. IRB, IEC review and science also, we are going to modify it. And qualified individual, which was already there. Uh, and quality already there. Protocol, it's already there. Reliable results also already there. And investigational product also already there. Now, biggest change. One more change which we are discussing about it is Annexure 1 which includes your IRB IEC earlier in E6R2, it was in third principle or uh, section three in your ICH E6R2, which was third section of IRB IEC, its composition and its responsibilities. But now we are going to change it as Annexure 1. Annexure 1, the first thing is your IRB IEC. So Annexure 1, 1.1 is uh, composition and responsibility and functioning of your IRB and IEC, which was earlier was 3.1 to 3.4. So responsibilities, composition, functions and procedures and records. New section or new details were being added, which is submission and communication in R3. In this, they've added as global languages about reporting to IRB and IEC and also to the regulatory authorities. So they have added some new languages also wherein IRB IEC can be reported in local languages as well as regulatory authority can be added into the local languages. And it was not available at uh, earlier version of E6R2, but now we are going to add in E6R3, which is the newer version which is being added in Annexure 1 of 1.5. So this is something which is newly added for IRB IEC. And one more thing is, uh, updating to re reflect digitalization and variable approach in obtaining e-consent. See, this is a, one of the most important thing which is already in discussion from uh, E6R2. The digital e-consent was not there in E6R2, but because of COVID, we have got uh, e-consent or electronic consent form uh, by the use of uh, technology. So digitalization of consent was being added in IRB IEC and how we are going to review and approve based on the IRB IEC approval for the digitalization of informed consent is being added into your IRB IEC section about the digitalized e-consent approval and clarified the potential of for participants for compensated for the cost incurred to the participants in the trial. So they have uh, given clarification of uh, costing also compensation also for the subjects who are participating uh, into clinical trial for the time incurred or for the cost incurred or whatever it is, it has been added. 
Now, one more annexure. One more annexure is annexure one, which is second of annexure one, which is investigator responsibility. Earlier, uh, the section was fourth section investigator responsibility, different responsibility were there, and including your qualification and training uh, till your clinical study reports. There are so many uh, different responsibilities were there. Now, they have included a couple of uh, responsibilities in combination, like for example, Qualification of training, earlier it was 4.1, they have modified into 2.1. And resources, either it is human resources or your hospital or facilities, they have made it to 2.2. And responsibilities of conducting, which is 4.1 and 2, they have made it to 2.3. The communication with IRB, IEC, compliance with clinical trials protocol and uh, termination of uh, clinical trial, which was 4.12, they have made it to 2.6. Medical care and medical decisions, 4.3 and 4.11 was being given into 2.7. And informed consent of trial subjects, 4.8, they have made it to 2.8. End of uh, participation into clinical trial, 4.3, they have modified into 2.9. Investigational product management, which is drug accountability, earlier it was in 4.6. How to handle the drug and drug accountability? It has been made it to 2.10. Randomization procedure and unblinding in case of the study is double blind, then we are going to make it as 2.11. And records, which is 4.9, being modified earlier to now currently 2.12. And clinical study report, which was earlier 4.13 to 2.12. So there are no new uh, details which are being added to the responsibility of investigator. Just the process is going to be changed, but the uh, earlier ones were being included as it is, but a couple of things were combined. So earlier it was 13 uh, responsibilities which we had, but now currently we will get only 12 responsibilities for investigator to conduct clinical trial in ICH E6R3. Couple of things were being combined to one principle. <clears throat> Coming back to sponsor. So sponsor responsibility comes in fifth section of the E6R2, which is going to be modified to your new one, which is annexure one under third section, annexure one, 3.1 to 3.9. So in this one, uh, which is very important, which has been added is resources. So resources 3.2 is major revamp. This was not there in your uh, E6R2. Resource was not there in E6R2 and sponsor oversight. So sponsor oversight was not there. So resources and sponsor oversight. So these two were not available at your sponsor responsibilities in E6R2, but those were being included in your uh, newer version of E6R3. So remaining all things, either it has been combined or either it has been modified, but nothing has been removed. All the sponsor responsibilities have been shortened and clubbed together to make some responsibilities and only two new responsibilities were being added. One is resources and one is sponsor oversight, which were new uh, responsibilities of sponsor, which is being added. Now, one more thing. Uh, so some of the responsibilities from uh, sponsor were being added to the newer version of E6R3, like for example, quality management of 5.0, they have made it, made it to 3.10, 5.12, uh, 5.18 and 19, they have made it to 3.11, which is QA and QC. So new reports or new aspects were not been added. Only two were been added. One is uh, uh, the resources and uh, one more is sponsor oversight. And this is one of the most important topic, which has been major revamp. So this was not there in E6R2. Now, this is something which came into new in E6R3, which is revamp. Earlier, it was not at all there. So not applicable, major revamp in R2. So earlier R2 does not have this all things. Now, how you safeguarded blinding by using data governance, either it is IVRS or IWRS, how you have used, what is the life cycle of data and what is a computerized system validation like CSV. And what is the security systems like firewalls and security systems, they have added this also in data governance and what is validation csv computer system validation if system gets failed what is that we can do it technical support and user management how a new user will be created how user will be removed how user will be modified how user will be uh, given access to the systems everything is being spoken into one word which is data governance which is annexure uh, 
uh, one fourth section. So fourth section, 4.1 to 4.8, which is a major revamp. We have to wait for the final version of this copy, which is going to be updated into 4.1 section. No, uh, this this was not available in E6 R2, but it is major revamp in E6 R3. And yeah, glossaries, newer times, which were been added, uh, which was earlier not there. Like for example, Ascent was not there. Uh, which was baby, uh, small children's uh, informed consent. CSV was not there. Data acquisition tool was not there. Uh, data on data, metadata was not there. Reference safety information like CCDS or CCSI or SMDC or uh, IB was not there. And service provider, who is service provider like IT companies or someone who is service provider. And what is mean by signatures? All this were new terms. What were revised is essential documents records were being revised. IRB is being revised. Investigator site is reviewed. Source records, sponsor, trial participant, and adverse events and adverse drug reaction related definitions were being modified and revised. We have to wait for the final definition so that we can understand. But the newer terms are ascent or CSV or data equation or metadata, which is data on data and reference safety information to understand the adverse events, uh, relatedness or unexpectedness and service providers and signatures. And one more is on uh, Appendix A, which is Investigator Browser, uh, which was earlier in seventh section, 7.1 and 7.2 and 7.3. They have put introduction and general consideration and content. So no major revamps were there, just number details were being modified and we have to wait to still see what are the differences possibly we are going to get in Appendix A in IP. So Appendix A is IP, Appendix B is clinical trial protocol and reference is earlier it was six section 6.1 to 6.15. So there is no major revamp which has been done. Uh, general information, background, trial objective, purpose, design, selection, withdrawals, treatments, assessment of efficacy and uh, safety and statistical considerations, which were similar of that. And uh, direct access QA and QC, ethics and data handling and financing and publication policies, which was similar earlier also, now also. Now, just that we have modified it from 6.1 to 6.1 uh, to 6.15 to uh, Appendix B from 1, B1 to B16. So this is something which we have modified. And Appendix C, we have added to essential document, uh, which was earlier eighth section. And management of essential documents, no major, no major revamp and essentiality of uh, trial records also. There was no major revamp, which was being done. So now this is my last slide. I'll just repeat uh, one more time. What was the major changes which we have got? So we have got earlier E6 uh, R2, which was most important changes which were being done. Uh, the first one is we have added introduction and uh, principles and annexure one. Annexure one, IRB, IEC, investigator, sponsor and data governance. Glossaries, appendix one or appendix A, IB, and Appendix B, Clinical Trial Protocol, and Appendix C, Essential Documents. So this is something which is being changed in your uh, ICH E6 R2.